Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about eigen decomposition. So I'll try to keep this video pretty short and sweet. We're basically going to go over what is an eigen decomposition, how do you compute one by hand if you have to, and then the most important part, which is why are eigen decompositions actually useful for anything. So first let's go ahead and talk about what it is. You probably noticed the word eigen in the eigen decomposition, and that's going to be at the heart of how we actually derive it. So this has a lot to do with the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix, which implies that the matrix we're working with in this setup has to be square, because we know only square matrices have eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's say we're working with this very small 2x2 two two matrix just for the beginning of this video. So it's 1, 4, 9, and 1. So I have a whole separate video on eigenvectors and eigenvalues, which I'll link in the description below. But basically, we can get the eigenvalues as 7 and negative 5. And then we can get the eigenvectors as 2 and 3. So this eigenvector matches up to the 7. And then 2 and negative 3, which matches up to the negative 5. Now, something we often also do is normalize the eigenvectors so that they have unit norm. So we can go ahead and do that. And we would get u1 and u2 as the normalized eigenvectors corresponding to the first and second eigenvalue. Okay, so, so far pretty standard procedure. Now what do we do with this? If we look at all this setup, we can actually compress this, make it compact into a matrix form. How do we do that? So first we can look at these two equations, which are literally the definition of what an eigenvector and an eigenvalue is. So A times U1, U1 being the normalized first eigenvector, has to be equal to lambda 1 U1. That's the definition. Same thing, A times U2 is equal to lambda 2 times U2. So that's the definition again. Now we can put these two equations into a matrix form. So we can put A on the left, put U1 and U2, which again are the normalized eigenvectors, into their own little 2 by 2 matrix. So just to be explicit here, the first column is U1 and the second column is U2, and each of these has two numbers. So this in total is a 2 by 2 matrix. And that is equal to U1, U2, so the same matrix that was right here times this diagonal matrix, lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. Now it's not extremely obvious why this equation should be true, but if you go ahead and actually do this very small matrix multiplication, you'll see that what you get from this are exactly these two equations here. Okay, so that means that we can write this in this form. Now let's give these guys a name. So let's call this U1, U2 as just big U matrix. And let's call this guy, this lambda 1, lambda 2 diagonal matrix, as big lambda. So it looks like a A without the bar in the middle. So that we now have this matrix equation, which is A times U. A times U is equal to U times lambda. U times lambda. And now what we can do to get A by itself, we can apply the inverse of U on both sides. So we can take inverse of U on this side, inverse of U on this side, and we get this. And this thing that I've underlined in red is what's called the eigen decomposition. The reason it's called that is because we're decomposing A. Decomposing a matrix means splitting it up into component matrices. So we're taking A and representing it as three component matrices, U, lambda, and U inverse. Okay, and it's called an eigen decomposition because U contains the eigenvectors and lambda contains the eigenvalues. So that's how you take an eigen decomposition, what it means, and how you would kind of do one manually if you had to, although you'll pretty much never have to do that. But now the most important part of the video is why is this actually useful at all? What do we do by taking a matrix and splitting it up into these three component matrices? So consider this very, very common routine procedure we need to do in data science, which is taking a matrix to a power. Why is this a routine operation? Well, think about what a matrix is from your very first definition of linear algebra. You should have learned that a matrix is a linear transformation. A much easier way to say it is a function which maps some vector to another vector. And often in data science and machine learning, we're doing some kind of algorithm where we're applying this linear transformation at every step of the algorithm, which means that we have to apply this matrix several times, which ends up becoming a matrix to the power of some number. So let's say we're trying to compute A, A again just being any square matrix that we have the eigen decomposition for. Let's say we're trying to do A to the power of some number P, okay? Let's see what happens if we don't consider the eigen decomposition at all. So let's just say that P is equal to 8, so we're trying to find A to the power of 8. I've actually explicitly written out 8 A's here, and let's think about how we would do it, being a little bit smart about it. 
So we could first compute a squared. So that's one matrix multiplication we just have to do. And now we can do that for this pair, this pair, this pair, and this pair. So now the next step would be to compute a to the fourth by taking a squared and multiplying two of them together. So now we have a to the fourth here and a to the fourth here. The last step would be multiplying two of these a to the fourths together to get our final result of a to the eighth. Okay, so we were a little bit smart about it in the sense that we grouped things together uh, so that we weren't doing seven multiplications. But how many multiplications did we actually have to do? We had to find a squared. Then we had to find a to the fourth. Then we had to find a to the eighth. So we had to do three multiplications in order to get this to happen. And in general, we're going to have to do log 2 of p. Okay, so I'm going to write that here. Log 2 of p. Just a quick note why this is true. So p here was 8, and log 2 of 8 is 3, which makes sense why we have to do three multiplications. But in general, when you group things into pairs like this, the number of multiplications you're doing total is log 2 of whatever number of things there were to begin with, because this is logarithmically going down. Okay, can we do better than this using the eigen decomposition? The answer is yes. So let's close this video by looking at how to make this a lot faster using an eigen decomposition. So let's say we have the eigen decomposition of A, which again is u lambda u inverse. That means that A to the power of p, we can write out as u lambda u inverse written p times. At first glance, it looks like I made this more complicated, but there's a very special simplification we can make if we look at the fact that there's these u inverse u's right next to each other several times in this big product. And of course, a matrix times its inverse is the identity, so we don't have to even compute that. So those all go away, leaving a bunch of lambdas in the middle so that this big product simplifies nicely to u lambda matrix to the power of p u inverse. Now, the other big note is that lambda to the power of p is actually extremely easy to compute. Why? Because lambda is a diagonal matrix, which means that the only non-zero entries in the matrix would live on the diagonal, which means that taking that whole matrix to a power is the same thing as just taking any of the diagonal elements to the power of p. That's written here as lambda to the p would be lambda 1 to the p, lambda 2 to the p, all the way to lambda n to the p, and everything else would be zero. So this is not really as intense as doing a true matrix product. It's literally just taking n numbers and raising them to some power. Okay, so all that means that how many matrix multiplications do we actually have to do to get at our final result of a to the p? Well, we just have to compute this quantity, which means that we'll have to do one matrix multiplication for u times lambda to the p, and then one more matrix multiplication for the result of that with u inverse on the other side, which means we just had to do two matrix multiplications. So compare two matrix multiplications with log 2 to the power of p. As p gets very large, let's say it's something like 100 or 1,000, this is going to be way, way, way bigger than 2. Okay? So that's why the eigen decomposition is a useful tool for us data scientists and machine learning experts and whatever you might be doing, because it's going to computationally take some very common operation like a matrix power and bring it down to a scale that doesn't cause us a huge computational overhead. So hopefully you learned something about eigen decompositions through this video. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments are welcome, and I'll see you next time.